What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly podcast covering the video game industry. Join us every Thursday for a discussion about the latest gaming news, reviews, and exclusive reveals alongside Game Informer staff and special guests from around the industry. I'm your host, Alex Van Aken, and today I'm joined by Marcus Stewart. How you doing, Marcus? I'm doing pretty well. How about you? I am doing good. I just finished my move into a new house literally half an hour before this podcast. I finished the last load, so I'm ready to start settling into my new townhouse. But thank you for asking, Marcus. I I hope things are good for you. Thank you. I didn't move, so I guess things are the same. (laughs) (laughs) Perfect. We are also joined by Kyle Hilliard. How are you doing? Hello. Hopefully I don't have to move again anytime soon. I'm glad you're done with yours, though. That's a stressful thing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, And rounding out the show this week, Wesley LeBlanc. How you doing, Wes? I'm doing great. I just got back from a little mini vacation in Colorado, and I'm um, happy to report that Florida still kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go? Um, it's called Glenwood Springs. It's like oh, I've been there. Yeah, two or three hours from Denver. We just did like it was one of my friend's thirtieth birthday, and she had never seen snow, so we planned a whole like all the snow things you can do. Snow. Did you go to skiing, the mountainside that. sauna spa thing? Yeah. Hot with like all the public pools and stuff. Yeah, they have like the different temperatures and the yeah. minerals. And I saw stuff. a snake there in my pool one time. In the pool, it was a snake. Yeah, it was next to, next to the pool. Mm, David oh. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, you guys should have come to Minnesota if you wanted to see some snow this week. Well, everything I heard leading up to this trip was like Minnesota's about to be in some trouble with the blizzard. So yeah, I mean, we would have given your friend enough snow for their lifetime. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying. Well, let's get into the show this week. This is a podcast about video games, and uh, there's a lot of video games to talk about this week. Wes, we're going to start with you. You went to New York uh, recently to play Final Fantasy 16, to interview um, Yoshi P, all the the crew on Final Fantasy 16. How's how's everything looking? How, How are you liking it? I think it's going to be a very different Final Fantasy, but a very, very good Final Fantasy. Um, And that is, if you've been playing Final Fantasy for the past, uh, I don't know, decade, like it's been leaning more and more towards action. And this feels like the culmination of that. Like, I don't know how much more action Final Fantasy can get after 16, because this is Devil May Cry meets Final Fantasy, which makes sense because the combat director of 16 is Ryota Suzuki, who was one of the um, lead designers on Devil May Cry 5's combat. I think he specifically did, like his main focus was Nero's combat, but um, don't quote me on that. Oh, cool. But he also was a designer on Marvel vs. Capcom 2. He's been at Capcom for basically almost 20 years just designing combat. And um, uh, yeah, now he's making a uh, Final Fantasy combat system. And unsurprisingly... It's very combo heavy, very action, very fast paced, very flashy and cinematic. And weirdly enough, I think it works really well in the world of Final Fantasy, Um, especially in the setting, which is back to like Final Fantasy's high fantasy roots. You know, we're kind of getting away from like the science, like not steampunk, but like, you know, Final Fantasy lately has been like mixing machinery with fantasy and science and stuff. This is very much medieval Final Fantasy, like the uh, original games. And is I was while playing it, I was thinking like how we don't often get action games like this in like high fantasy settings. Like I'm so used to action games of late being like, you know, Devil May Cry or Platinum games and stuff like that. It's very, you know, uh, fictional, like sci fi ish worlds. And it's fun to just destroy people with the sword and magic in fantasy while doing it super fast. Sounds like Dragon's Dogma. Yeah, a bit, yeah. And that was, what, 2012? So, yeah, it's been a minute since like we've that. had something like that. Um, but yeah, and then all the usual Final Fantasy mainstays are there. It's very pretty visually. Uh, unfortunately, the the preview that we got was in a dimly lit setting in a nondescript castle. So, like, it didn't really get to shine too much visually. But, like, cinematics and stuff look great. The music is fantastic. It is, uh, I forget the first name, but Soken, which is the composer for Final Fantasy fourteen which makes sense because the producer of this game is Naoki Yoshida, the director of Final Fantasy XIV. Like this is, I know a lot of people I've seen criticism like are worried that this is not a Final Fantasy game, Um, but it is. It's just a Final Fantasy game with action heavy combat. And um, I think it's worth giving a shot. So um, 
the you said you were in like this dimly lit castle area. What are the? Or is it like you're going corridor corridor to corridor to big arena, uh, to cinematic? Like, what's are you exploring the castle? What was the whole environment like? So they told that this was a dungeon basically, and it okay. was a very traditional dungeon. Like you're going through a castle. There's like small rooms you can pop into and open a chest maybe, but like for the most part, it's moving from room to room, taking out enemies. There's a mini boss fight, and then there's a boss fight at the end. Very classic dungeon feel. Um, but they did tell us and showed us like in a presentation that like there is the the big open area exploration. There's side things, side quests, you know, side activities, bounties. Like there's a lot of stuff to do outside of dungeon. Unfortunately, we didn't get to play that at all. So I don't really know how that works. But um, yeah, but what we did was pretty much exclusively dungeon stuff. It was uh, the entire preview was focused on combat. I've seen since the preview embargo earlier this week, people have been you know, wondering about the story. And I'm seeing people say like, oh, they're not saying anything about these characters or story. And the truth is we just didn't get much of that because this preview was very focused on combat, which is why I think most of the previews are talking about combat. Okay. You got you to make sure you mention, Wes, that you have a pet dog who looks exactly like Wolf Link from Twilight Princess. <laughs> yes, Torgal. <laughs> we, uh, if you watch an NGT on like Game Informer YouTube channel, you mentioned Kyle mentioned that in me and Jesse Vitelli of Prima Games, who joined us, were both commenting how we did not realize that, but wish we did because they, there's a lot of, they've talked openly about their inspirations from other games in this game. And I wouldn't be surprised if Twilight Princess has a little, yeah. little nod in it. But I mean, mechanically though, it, it's a cool idea. The dog is just always with you and will help you with attacks. And, I, and you can direct it if you want, Wes, but you can also just ignore him and just have him as a partner hanging around. I like that idea. Yeah, you kind of like direct his actions. Like you're not picking his individual moves like you are with your protagonist, Clive, but you're telling him to attack or like defend or heal. And then they also have these things called timely support accessories, which is kind of their way to- implement. Rolls off the tongue. Yeah, <laughs> it's their way to implement accessibility into the game. So you equip these rings and they do different things that makes the game easier or just like more accessible. And for example, one of the rings makes it so where you don't have to worry about Torgo. It'll do all the, the game will do everything you need with him automatically. There's another that like when your health drops below a certain percentage, uh, Clive will automatically use a potion. There's one that right before an enemy attacks, it slows the game down so you can hit the uh, dodge or parry button easily. There's one that takes away the entire combo system, which is very input based. Like it, you kind of feel like you're playing a fighter game at times and makes it so you can just press one button and pull off really amazing combos. It almost sounds like a monster hunter protag or companion. Yeah. It, that's, that's actually a good um, shout. Yeah. It, it is very, I was to that. curious if it was going to be that or like an actual like party member, but it sounds like yeah, more of like a, a helper, an Atreus, a monster hunter. Mm hmm cat dog situation yeah there is no like set party people will kind of pop in and out of your party and you will never well they said you will not be controlling ai um or controlling party members i only played two okay. hours i didn't control any party members i don't know if they have any surprises but like i wouldn't expect to be choosing your um you know attacks that sid or somebody else is doing they're going to do that on their own okay so where it was the pacing of the the castle like I guess my hang up is typically like a lot of dungeons in RPGs. I typically, I feel like they, they, their pacing can either it's one of the one extreme or the other. It's like, Oh my God, like there's nothing to do in here. I'm just running and there's around the corner are some enemies and I'm just going to, you know, kind of mindlessly go through them. And then there are other games, um, maybe like persona kind of falls into both camps a little bit, but there are other games with dungeons that are like, okay, I've got to really think about this and kind of plan and make sure I have my consumables and, and everything in check, or I'm not going to be able to get through this. Did you have a sense of like the difficulty and like the pacing of those dungeons? I think one thing me and the other people that have previewed it and talking with them is that it felt like a pretty easy preview, but we had abilities that they said we would not have at this point in the final game. And we were all trying okay. out those different accessories. Um, I don't necessarily plan to use any of those just because I don't I, I don't plan to. And um, I imagine that would up the difficulty a bit. But I was testing each of them out thoroughly just to see how they work in the game. Um, but yeah, it, that dungeon at least didn't require too much planning or thought. It was like five hours in. 
Um, you mentioned Persona, though. One thing I did like about it is it kind of had that same Persona dungeon feel where you are kind of just going through nondescript areas, but there's like a a goal or like a villain at the end of it. Um, in this case, it was Benedicta, and she's kind of like taunting you throughout the dungeon, and you're trying to get to her at the end, and she's the boss fight at the end, which you can watch in our NGT if you're curious. And that was nice. You had like a reason to continue going through the dungeon. You're not just going through a dungeon because you have to grind. You're going through to reach Benedicta at the end who keeps escaping your grasp. Um, again, I don't know if that's what every dungeon is going to be like, but um, if that's an instance of like what most dungeons in the game are going to be like in the final product, um, I think it'll be pretty fair dungeon. It also only took yeah. me like 20, 30 minutes to get through, which is pretty short for a dungeon. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious, like, how open... Because, like, Final Fantasy is so weird in that, like, there's the 13s, right, which are just, like, straight shots. And then there's, like, the 15, which is, like, arguably too open until, like, the last couple hours of the game. Like, I wonder where this one falls. Like, have they said if it's, like, open world necessarily? I mean, I don't even... So they have specifically said it's not open world. It's It's going to be open area. I don't know if they've mentioned how many open areas, but I have seen some numbers thrown around recently this week with previews that like some of them are four square kilometers. I'm American, so I don't know what a kilometer is, but like someone go figure out the math. Is that big? <laughs> also, is that small? I don't know, <laughs> man. When it comes to video games, like that terminology just <laughs> means just nothing. Means nothing. You yeah, know, it's like I agree. It, 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 what's like, the scale you know? of your world? You right. Know? Yeah. I yeah. wonder if it's like <clears throat> it kind of sounds like closer to Final Fantasy twelve maybe because that was kind of like a middle ground of like those were kind of just big hubs but not open world Um, Uh, not necessarily linear the way like 10 and and the 13 games which i I mean i I don't necessarily mind those i i know 13 kind of gets a bad rap for that but i like 13 um yeah yeah, i so i'm yeah middle ground would be nice though especially if you're like an action game i want to be able to sort of run around and and beat up on some monsters in an open area yeah yeah i wouldn't be surprised if it's a smaller version of what Final Fantasy 15 did because 15 wasn't open world, right? You kind of hit these areas that were large and open and then you can... Uh, no, it was, it, it was, it was pretty open. Yeah, like the first yeah. two thirds of it are open world. Okay. And then the last third of it, you basically get on a train and you don't get off. Yeah, like, and then you go through just, that one chapter where you just go through hallways for yeah, three yeah. Hours. And like, <laughs> yeah, 15, not not to dive into like a big 15 tangent, which I like. I really like 15 a lot. It Like, it, it they didn't, they never quite squared it uh correctly not not to make a pun out of it but like it just never felt like it took advantage of its open world to me like it could have been totally fine as a linear game or it would have been nice to be able to like drive your car around this big open world and find cool stuff but there was no cool stuff to find yeah yeah for the most part yeah that's one of the big unknowns with this game so i mean they've said it's not open world they said it's big areas there's hunts and side quests and stuff but yeah until i mean that's a lot of games have that stuff and they can still have completely uh just boring open areas to explore so yeah i'm excited man sitting in on the the new gameplay today with you and watching it be played like i've never been the biggest turn-based guy like i'm really excited for it to go full action with the final fantasy budget you know like that's i think that's gonna be cool and i don't and i'm i don't really love the fantasy stuff i like the steampunk you know stuff yeah that's the sort of final fantasy i like but uh, i'm excited for this one I, i all the more excited after watching your gameplay yeah, it's um. I have a feature up on GameInformer.com about what their. Th- I asked them like their thoughts on turn base because people, I think, people that are like upset that Final Fantasy isn't turn based anymore. I feel like are like not paying attention to the timeline. I I, I think the last true turn based game might have been, like ten on PS2. They yeah. started to gradually get away from it. Twelve was not turn based. Thirteen was kind of turn based. That was probably the closest return to it. But I mean, Final Fantasy hasn't been turn based for over a decade, and if you've been paying attention to the yeah, series, you decades. know it's been yeah, it's been going more and more action. And they have a, their response was basically like, "Look, we pay attention to people playing our games, and in today's modern gaming landscape, like yes, people who grew up with Final Fantasy love turn based, but today, and Yoshida said like, when kids press square, they want a gun to shoot in GTA. Like that's and that's <laughs> this is their response to that. Like if you hit a button on your controller they want immediate action um and with this game being so expensive and being a mainline final fantasy they need as many players playing it as possible i think it's also the thing that turn-based existed in the first place because technology at the time just could not do real-time combat so that was sort of the the workaround so now it makes sense that square like hey we're at the point where we don't have to do that anymore because we only did it as like a compromise you know a compromise that people liked but it's Mm -hmm. like oh if we don't have to do it then 
we're just not gonna do it <laughs> and there's like yeah. there's plenty of turn based out there and chained echoes last year like was a lot of people love that uh octopath traveler 2 just came out yeah but those don't have chocobos in them <laughs> that's they true. gotta have the chocobo gotta have that moogle um but yeah i'm i'm <laughs> thoroughly stoked for final fantasy 16 it is i was already really excited about it just because i love final fantasy but um my questions and concerns have been quelled around the uh combat sweet well let's get into the playlist there's been a lot of games we've been playing wolong fallen dynasty uh tama Kart. i've been playing spelunky a lot <laughs> you know the the oldest game ever compared to uh, you sequel. know the stuff we normally talk about interesting interesting I play the sequel too. Okay, Maybe okay. I've, I've been playing a lot of Spelunky. Um, but let's talk about Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Kyle, yeah, how do you like it? I, am I the only one on this uh, panel that's played it? Or the full release, Wes? I know you played like for a preview, I think. I right? think me and Marcus both have a few hours into the preview version. I really want to yeah, play it. We played okay. a, I played a preview build for Tokyo Game Show. I have the full game. I just haven't had a chance to get around to it. Right. But, yeah. So my big thing was like, I, uh, this is not fair of me, but I was kind of ignoring Wolong. I was like, eh, I don't know. It's, it's kind of, I, for some reason I thought it was like an online free to play game at some point. I don't know why that happened. I, I pay attention. I don't know why I thought that was, uh, but then Wes, we did a new game play today together and I just watched you play for a little bit and I was like, Oh, this is Sekiro. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is Team Ninja's. If Neo is Team Ninja's response to Dark Souls, Wo Long is Team Ninja's response to Sekiro. And Sekiro is that's like, sick. Is my I Elden Ring is like my favorite from software game, and then Sekiro is second, and then everything yeah. else kind of like falls in random orders and stuff like that. And the the nicest thing you know a really nice thing I can say about Wo Long is it it feels very close to Sekiro. They did a good job, sort of taking the core ideas of that game of just like very focused on counters. Um, if you, you can be stealthy in some situations, uh, it just, it, the combat feels really good. Um, like pulling you're like, you're encouraged to pull off counters with every enemy you encounter. And it's like, and the window is pretty good. And the sort of the, um, the messaging of like when you counter is pretty good. And then the same goes for bosses. Like rather than like, hitting them as much as you can with in the windows where they're charging up their their combos or whatever you are way more successful by just waiting around and like pulling off counters like if you can if you can figure out their counter sort of rhythms like you're gonna win and like i just kind of like that sort of combat like it feels like less like i'm hitting my head against a brick wall and more that i'm just like getting the timing down and yeah just overall it's just it's just good it even rewards you for sort of doing that thing where you run around an area and try to clean up all the enemies because it like raise your ranking. Um, if the more enemies you kill on your way to the boss, the higher your ranking, which means you take less damage in the boss fight, which is cool. Cause like I've always been the sort of dark souls from sort of software player where I like to go around and clean up as much as possible to get as much experience as I can to try to level up, to go into the boss. So it's nice to get like a little bit of a reward for that. How's the difficulty compared to Sekiro? Like some of those fights, you know, early on in the game, like Lady Butterfly, right? Yeah. That was like a big <laughs> block for a lot of players. Sekiro is tough, man. Like I, I Sekiro yeah. is hard, um, and it never stops really being hard. No, it doesn't. Yeah, Wo Long is a few sort of steps down. It is not as hard as Sekiro. The first boss is is rough. Um, the first boss took me a long time to get past, and that was, was it, me sort of. Who was that first boss? Is because I I think the first boss I beat in my preview was the large guy with the hammer in the field, or like. Uh yes yes, yes. did he have he has two forms did he yep. have two forms yeah in the demo? two phases yeah. and I remember yeah that was a yeah big roadblock for me <laughs> yeah which like will be a roadblock for people I think um and which is kind of par for the course for yeah. these kind of games like the first it's like few... okay to beat this you have to understand the fundamentals yes and part of that first boss is learning those and this one is tough like this one it was it was definitely one of those moments where i was like oh i finally beat it oh crap here's the second phase you know which is so stupid i should why did i ever think that i that i actually won you know when i first fought him i thought it was a boss you're supposed to die to and i was like oh right maybe i'm supposed to last a little bit longer and then die and i was like oh no i have to beat this oh, dude yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I will say, like, even with that, like, like know that going in, take your time in the first area and level up, you know, like, 
go do some laps, you know, get some experience and that kind of thing. Um, and then after that, I feel like it, it it's pretty smooth sailing. I like there's been a couple. Then this is, I'm a bad from player, right? Like I am not good at those games, despite enjoying them. There have been a few bosses I beat on my first try, which is like unheard of when it comes to Kyle playing from software games. Um, and I appreciate it for that reason. I like I like having some challenge. I like having running into the bosses that take me five or six tries. I also like having a boss that you know is a giant monster that growls at me in a cutscene, and then I'm able to never have to interact with him again. <laughs> like that's I'm totally open to that. But uh, yeah, so just good things to say about it. Like an early like uh, we'll, you know by the end of the year we'll see where it falls on like my top ten list. But it it really is already one of those contenders for me. Like I it really has surprised me in how much I like it. That's what awesome. is the level design like? Because I feel like anytime a game and people are going to be upset that we're like comparing it to From and Souls, but it is what it is. It's 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 unavoidable. Like it's yeah. so close. Yeah. I feel like the biggest miss for games trying to emulate that is like the level design. Like they get the bosses, they get the challenge and stuff, but then like nobody builds levels or stages or worlds like from what is Wolong's like? So Wolong's are like uh, where Sekiro is kind. I don't know what, what do we call that where it's it it's all connected, right? It is like it's not open world, but you're not they're not levels, right? Mm -hmm. In yeah. Wolong they are levels, and I think they are well designed. And one of the things they do that's cool is they actually encourage you to explore every nook and cranny because you can find these places where you can plant flags which increases that rank I was talking about earlier that makes you stronger against the boss. So like, and it'll tell you how many there are. There are six in this level. So like, I want to go find all those because the more of those I find, the stronger I'm going to be against the boss. And, um, you know, it's doing that thing where you're unlocking shortcuts and that kind of thing. Like, I think it's pretty good. It's Is it, it like, um, is it like Neo? Because the Neo games were, they straight up had a level select where, you know, you're just like on a world map, you're like, this is the next mission go here and you know that those levels were big but they are not interconnected the way from software games are yeah i i haven't played either neo game but that i that's exactly how Wo long works like there's okay. once you beat a level you go to a, a level select area but in terms of like just the core design it's it's good like every everything about this game comes with the asterisk of like not quite as good as from right like it, the combat is really great, but it's, it's not quite as good as Sekiro. The level design is really good. It's not quite as good as Sekiro, you know? The uh, Just sort of the general... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, uh, quality of the visuals and, you know, cutscenes and everything. It's like, it's not quite up there with From, but, like, it, it's a really good impression. Like, a better than I expected to the point where, like, I'm really enjoying this game the the big the one like negative i would say is like the story is just doing like nothing for me i couldn't even tell you like any of the characters names it's all based on the three kingdoms novels um you know chinese history and that kind of thing which like i i have experienced that in so many video games you'd think i would be better versed in it <laughs> like just by playing a bunch of dynasty warriors games and stuff like that but like just like uh, I just don't know who any of these people are or yeah. what. Have I, I you think fought Lu Bu yet? Uh, no, I think he appeared in a cutscene though. Okay, is there uh, a yellow turban rebellion? Yes, I uh, or that's who you're fighting in the beginning. See, Marcus, you know your stuff. <laughs> yeah. I've played at least two Dynasty Warriors games, <laughs> so yeah, it's like, it's it's that you, you, get you know it's, yeah. it's that stuff. It's that historical kind of Chinese uh, fantasy history. Um, which maybe like if you're familiar with that and you really like it you maybe you'll get more out of it because you'll like oh i know that guy i know that guy me i like i I'm is, it, sort is of that the same for scenes. like bosses because i've been looking at a lot of uh screenshots and it seems like there's a huge emphasis on um like possessed wildlife or infected wildlife like I see like giant boar bosses, monkeys, birds. Yeah, historically like accurate. There's... Yeah, <laughs> right. No, but you're you're fighting a lot of those. But then you're also fighting. There are human characters who morph into monsters. Or one that I was fighting last night was like this guy who split himself into dozens of versions of himself, and I had to go kill the clones before I could go um, kill the the human guy. So it's not all monsters necessarily. It is it is characters that you're fighting. And then one more question. Uh, am I, I assume, well, Sekiro was not like a build-based game. Like I wasn't going in and like 
min maxing stats or equipping new items uh, like I would in a Souls game. Yeah. It, where does this fall in that spectrum? So you're not. Uh, that's a good. It's a. <sighs> it's very you, loot heavy. It's pretty much yeah. like Neo, where Neo was very focused on loot. Like you kill a guy and like things explode out of him like his armor and his weapons and you just pick Ooh, it up. I, I like that <laughs> yeah like that's what neo was and from what i played of uh, i felt like i was this, missing that in sekiro a bit yeah which was by design like sekiro yeah, is very yeah, much a, like this is all you have to work with you need to get good with this get be this, perfect there, yeah be good uh this game and the neo games were always like hey equip the best armor equip the best sword whatever you like there's like a gazillion different weapons like you want a pole arm they have that button you can press that just optimizes your entire build, right? I think that's what I was using during the preview. Oh, is there? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm actually, we, I am uh, unlike you, Alex, where I actually really don't like loot. I don't want to spend time looking at menus and comparing numbers. I don't I don't want to engage with any of that See, stuff. See, it, it makes my, my dumb monkey brain excited when... <laughs> Oh, you're there not are alone. shiny things yeah. on the screen and yeah. I get to it's like it's my motivation I'm like okay if I kill that guy with a giant hammer am I gonna get like some variation of that because that sounds sick so I'm gonna like spend four hours trying to beat this boss yeah and uh, me I, I have literally been using the same sword that I started with and just upgrading it this whole game it's <laughs> yeah. like I just and you'll don't, get multiple yeah. versions of the same sword like yes. oh this is the sword I have but like the number is higher yeah so which okay, is like yeah. a compliment to it because it's like you can play it like me where it's like i really like this starting weapon i'm just gonna i'm just gonna level that up you know which is kind of how i played elden ring as well <laughs> I, I never changed my weapon i just upgraded the one that i liked but you can also play like you alex where it's like you're where you're changing out gear all the time you're changing out weapons if you want like that's all there i do i will caution though i have this weird you, you, you wait you got to be careful with like your weight stuff yes um which really threw like i i was aware of that i you know i've, I've played a from game i know how weight affects your your character and stuff but like it really it still like really threw me off seems like it affects it more in this game basically yeah like it changes saying. some of your mechanics and that kind of thing which um just be aware of that but um yeah no i'm very much like i found a few pieces of armor i like i'm just like upgrading them and sticking with those uh, which is just how I like to play. Like, it's nice that you have the option to do it any way you want. But yeah, I definitely awesome. fall on the Sekiro side of things where it's like, I like I like focusing on one thing and trying to get really good at that. Sure. Uh, I'm excited. I down, by the way, while you were talking, I downloaded the whole game. <laughs> shout out, <laughs> shout out to Gigabit right Internet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, by, and just like the big takeaway here is like, honestly, like if you, if you like From games and specifically if you like Sekiro, like this is a good impression, right? It's it's okay. W one more question. I'm yeah. sorry, you got me excited, Kyle. Good, because I was also feel like I was sleeping on this a little bit. I absolutely was. Yeah. What's the stealth like? And like the in between boss fights, are you stealthing around on rooftops like you were in Sekiro, or is it more like less, I guess, vertical? Yeah, you you. Hmm, it depends on the level, right? You do oh, spend okay. a lot of time on rooftops. I mean, okay. the, the the it's not like you could play a full level stealthy right you can't just like fully rely on stealth but sure. like if you fight 10 enemies right on the way to the boss or whatever six of those you're gonna have to have a full-on battle with four of those you can probably sneak up and stab them in the back um, and you can cool. throw a lot of uh, experience points into stealth to try to make sure you walk quieter and quieter and quieter which i've only thrown a couple in there um so it's not it's not a stealth game it can't be approached fully as a stealth game but like when stealth opportunities arise, it man, it is so satisfying to creep up to someone's back and stab them and do this crazy animation where you jump in the air and like lunge down at them. Nice. <laughs> like it's 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 great. Is it different than what we played in the NGT? Because that was one of the things I was not so high on was the stealth was it it felt less like stealth and more like I could just slowly walk up behind somebody and stab them in the back. Like it didn't feel like an integrated stealth system. You just kind of wobble towards them. I mean that's that's what it is, yeah. And maybe I'm even being too nice, right? Because like I don't, I like being able to sneak up behind someone and stab them occasionally. But like, yeah, it is not. I would not call this a stealth game, right? Like it's it's mostly just when you get the chance to sneak up behind someone and stab them, it feels really good, and it, then you don't you don't have to go this huge battle, which is which is nice. You can just take someone out very quickly, which is why I always liked Sekiro more than like Dark Souls, because Sekiro like. If you're careful and you know a good path, you can actually avoid a lot of combat, but still get the advantage of the experience points and that kind of thing. And um, and and Wolong 
kind of feels closer to that, if that makes sense. Yeah, you can see the lineages, and Sekiro started as a, as a Tenchu game, and those games were pretty much all stealth, uh, whereas the Neo games are pretty, they take a lot of DNA from Ninja Gaiden, you know? Right, yeah. And those games were very much like, you run into a room, you're going to fight everybody. <laughs> like, yes, there's no yeah. hiding. Cool, but yeah, I so yeah, very positive for me for Wolong. I think I'm like three quarters of the way through or something like that. I checked I checked with our reviewer. I was like, hey, I'm I'm like in a sewer. Like, how am I looking right now? <laughs> how much of this game do I have left? Uh, and by the way, our reviewer, I believe by the time you're listening to this, our review is on the site. I think they gave it like an eight, seven, five. They, they really liked it too. So Yeah, yes. Elijah Gonzalez. Yes, yeah, good review. How long do you think it is? Like, were you at it three quarters? <sighs> I think I'm at like 15 or 20 hours oh, or something that. Like sounds that. amazing. I love yeah, that. so it's not cool. crazy long, but yeah. But it says Woo Long in the title. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's saying Whoa, you know, not that long, you know, reasonable. <laughs> whoa, not that long, Fall of Dynasty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. Well, Kyle, thank you for walking us through Woo Long. Do you need to get get out of here, or you want to stick around? I would I love to get out of here if you don't mind. Can I, yeah, yeah, mind? no worries. All right, we will. We will see you later. Uh, everybody go follow Kyle at Kyle M. Hilliard and uh, we'll see you uh, probably next week, Kyle, right? Yeah. I like to, every time you say, hey, we're podcasting, I get I get in there and I'm like, I'm going to be on this thing whether you want me to or not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks All right, for having bye, me. Bye, Kyle. Bye. Awesome. Well, let's keep going. You guys have been playing Atomic Heart. I haven't had time to hardly play anything um, this week with, with my move, but Atomic Heart was like the last thing I was playing like pretty frequently. So I'm curious what your impressions are. I have like a very, you know, three, four hours in the game. Wes, you finished it today. Yeah, like 40 uh, minutes. And you had some interesting thoughts I, I I felt like about the open world. So if you and Marcus want to chat about it, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts as you're you're further in the game. Yeah, I have not finished it yet, but I am in the open world. Uh got there pretty recently this past weekend i will say right off the bat i took the advice of some online commenters and i changed the uh dialogue i changed the from uh english to the russian dialogue with english subtitles and it is a markedly better experience (laughs) because uh, as you guys talked about last week and i said in the ngt with kyle uh the english performance is awful and the character and the character still sucks like the english titles it's still the same. Like he still says crispy okay. critters every two seconds, uh, but it's a lot better when you don't have to hear or you can't understand him saying it and you just read it. But it was fun to be like, okay, that is that just like a Russian? Maybe that's just a thing in Russia, like a catchphrase. Like <laughs> I've tried, I've tried looking for some answer. I've Googled it. Like it's, I can, all I can determine is the first time I heard it in game was he walked into a boiler room, which was very hot. And he said, I'm going to turn into a crispy critter. And I, maybe he just really liked that and it stuck. I can't find any other reason for him to say that. So it's so often, but it's like I said, it's nice when he says it in Russian and you can't understand it. I'm having a better time (laughs) with the game that I cannot understand what he's saying from an audio standpoint. (laughs) Yeah. Crispy Critters was a breakfast cereal manufactured by post cereal starting in 1963. The sweetened cereal made of oats consisted of animal shaped pieces similar to animal crackers that still doesn't fit the context of the game because he like i said he busted it out when he went into a hot area he's like oh i'm gonna fry up in here this is also in like the 50s right there's a wiktionary link it's got a single entry it's one line in this wiki this is crispy critter plural crispy critters u.s slang among emergency services a person who has been badly burned (laughs) Oh, no. Uh, And it's apparently been used in books. Uh, One written by Amelia Underwood in 2011. It's called Dark Forgiveness on page 152. It reads, (laughs) quote, fire stepped up on me. We stood toe to toe and I could feel the heat of her burning me like a really bad sunburn. My sarcastic side has just raised its ugly head. And for one split second, I figured I was going to be a crispy critter. And that just seems like bad uh bad taste at yeah. least for the, the 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 medical thing you mentioned of like just imagining working in a burn ward and then everyone's like oh we got some new crispy critters here today <laughs> like, and what, the, did you just the call o- these people <laughs> the only other entry uh that this is sourced in is another book by richard trotta senior 
released in 2020 uh, called Nikki's Fire. On page 119, it reads, quote, do you have any idea how many crispy critters could be avoided with just a little common sense? Not the time, Bob, Chief Blaine warned him. Crispy critters, Nikki asked. Burned people we find after the fires put out, Bob answered. Maybe that's it. These are people who did not survive the fire, it sounds like. If you're finding them after Maybe the they fire, read one of brutal. these books and were like, I like that. It's weird because yeah. he, he uses it for... Like, Everything. he uses it... Yeah, like, the way that I would be like, oh, shoot. He's like, oh, crispy critters. And you're like, what? why? Why are we doing this? It's like they were like, we really want this guy to have a catchphrase. And the only way it's going to stick is if he says it every other sentence. Because yeah. that's what <laughs> that's what you do, right? That's what people love. And they'll be like, they'll they'll say it in schools because they'll yeah. think this guy is just the coolest dude ever. My only other search results are Crispy Critters Pest Control and Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, and Crispy Critters Hobby Store and Raceway in Fairfield, New Jersey. Well... Crispy critters aside, I mean, I, <laughs> the, I, I'm, I'm kind of like mixed on the game, and I've kind of happened where it's like I, I love the world and I like looking at it. Uh, I think the gunplay still hasn't totally warmed up to me because I, I just, I think it's just okay, but it's not great. It, a lot of the shooting feels kind of weightless to me, and some of the encounters are a little, I don't say too hard. I don't know if it's a result of like the guns not feeling all the way there. Is it that you get stuck in a corner and then surrounded and you literally can't move at all? I mean, that's until... happened a few times, right? Yeah, they don't give you any recovery. Like you get, you get back alley mugged by those robots yeah. a lot of times. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they uh... <laughs> they're like right in your face too. It's You'll terrifying. Get, they'll do their running Superman punch or drop kick, and and then they just <laughs> start stomping on you. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just. And now that I'm in the open world and they've introduced like open world stealth of like, hey, you know, look out for the now there's more cameras and the the drones. It, it, I, I think I don't like that. It it feels hard to just clear out an, an, an area for good of stuff like, OK, I'm going to sneak around and kill everything in here and then I'm set because they respawn like, you know, they got those drones that go around and repair things. And then those don't and then stop you can't coming. Destroy the, yeah. Yeah. You can't destroy the thing that they come from. So it's like, yeah. So you're like, why yeah. I've got to where yeah. like, and the combat's already like just fine. So you're like, Oh, I don't want to fight anything. Cause it's just, it doesn't feel purposeful or satisfying. It's like, I'll sh kill this thing. That was kind of hard. And then a drone flies by immediately. And it's like, going to start working on it. And then I can't even like, Oh, I'll kill all the repair drones. It's like you said, they just keep coming back. So you're like, what is the, is this a stealth game? Should I just be trying to sneak around everything? Because I ammo is already kind of hard to come by, you know? <laughs> you know, like I feel like yeah. I'm losing all my, like the shotgun is what I use the most because it just feels like, at least from the weapons I have so far, like the best thing by far. Yeah. Uh, so I've been focusing my upgrades on that. You like know that, what gun that I can't stand? Mm -hmm. The energy pistol. Honestly, I feel I like it's weightless. That. It is, but I've relied on it a lot because it doesn't use ammo. So it's kind yeah. of become it comes it comes in pretty clutch, but it's yeah. pretty weak. Yeah, it's good for the the dull drones and the stuff. The regular handgun is kind of trash, so it's pretty much been the axe and the shotgun have been my go to for everything. Same as someone who beat the game, the axe is still like the weapon. The shotgun I use when I have the ammo and I need to really use it. Otherwise, I'm just hacking and slashing at everything. Oh, I've upgraded my axe so many times. That thing looks like a medieval just torture yeah. device at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's been a bummer of like I was like I just feel like everything I do feels futile if everything's just gonna fix itself. Like, can I at least destroy the thing that's regenerating all this stuff? And you can't. You can disable it shortly. So, and then the stealth almost feels. And I don't know if you get more. I mean, I've looked at the other abilities I've unlocked, and I haven't really seen much that's like stealth focus. But it doesn't feel super great because I feel like I get seen like constantly because there's things that fly overhead You'll, that you just yeah. cannot. You just don't notice. Even like the standard robots, you'll be right behind them. You're like, okay, I've I've nailed this stealth. And then they'll just 180 out of nowhere to get you. And you're like, cool, awesome. Yeah. Guess not. And I'm good at stuff. Like if I have the option most games to stealth, I usually do stealth. Me too. Me too. Um, it's and, but, almost impossible in this game. Yeah. Like I think I've stealth killed maybe four robots in the like four or five hours I've played. And that's not for a lack of trying. It's like, all right, I'm going to sneak up. And he sneaks too slow and they move too fast for his sneak speed. And then, like you said, you mm -hmm. take a breath and they're like, what? 
dropkick and now we're gonna <laughs> now we're gonna take your money <laughs> like, i also sometimes it's hard to tell if they've alert uh, detected me too and then now uh, they got the gta style alert system in the open world where like they're like hey if you get seen too many times they call all the robots nearby and they just ruin the, the drones bring in like they come in and drop like supply boxes from fortnite and then 15 <laughs> robots pop out and you're just like um like the open world so it has purpose it's to like just go find supplies and ammo and stuff and then there's also these things called testing grounds where you can go and complete these little kind of like challenge rooms to unlock new recipes i did a few and it wasn't worth it and yeah i played the game like a linear level there was a like just today recently there was a level i had to go basically across the map and it was like 1600 meters away and i'm just walking by everything because there's no run which is frustrating so i'm walking by everything and they're just i probably passed 300 enemies and i was like was am i like did they think i was gonna fight all these enemies along the way because they get alerted and i just keep walking and if you go far enough they just stop chasing you and it's just it's such a strange choice like i feel like the game would have been it would have benefited a lot from just if you just took me from this level to the next one like yeah. the open world it almost feels so like they discouraged the combat which is weird because the combat has so much like there's so much to it between the powers and the gun plays you're like oh i want to use all this stuff to like tear these guys apart but you throw so much and then you keep they never stop coming in a way that becomes less fun and you're like it just i'm running out there's not enough resources here for me to keep fighting these guys because i feel like i'm always struggling to find ammo or maintain ammo so you're like it almost feels like this is supposed to be a stealth game just because of the deck that you're stacking against me but it's it clearly isn't because the stealth is very mm -hmm. rudimentary so yeah i i've been clashing with that as i've been getting deeper into the world but yeah i i kind of had that realization towards the, the end of my last play session Wes, of like I think I should just book just it. <laughs> like, just go straight yep. for the little yeah. icon. And like, don't even... And it sucks. It's like, the only reason I want to explore is like, oh, I want to find more blueprints because I want to upgrade the two weapons that I really like. And, you know, you see in the the tree of like, oh, that sounds like a good upgrade, but I don't have the blueprint yet. So I should probably go out of my way to see if I can find it, right? So yeah, that's... But yeah, I think I'm just going to beeline it. And it's weird because I've even gone back and forth about like, should I just stop playing? Am I not having as much fun? But there's something about the world where you're like, I kind of want to see where this goes and what other weird locations there are. It, um, I, I, I played it because I, I really like Bioshock and I like Me seeing too. other developers try to do their take on Bioshock. Um, even though I don't know if we necessarily need to like pursue it so religiously, but, um, this game is l <laughs> like really, really Bioshock to the point where there are direct, very obvious references to Bioshock and that series as a whole that like caught me off guard, not in a bad or good way. I was just like, oh, they're you're not even trying to hide it. This is like, you're doing a Bioshock sequence, like full stop. And yeah, like if, don't play it for the story, basically. You have, oh. you're, you know this story, <laughs> like you know this story. Well, it sounds like don't play for the combat either. <laughs> yeah I, I, I wouldn't like on a, like y'all are running I away say from I, all the fights <laughs> yeah i say i'm playing it because i like like to see what other bioshock type games are trying to do that's the only reason i would recommend like beating it is just to like you know observe and analyze another take on that formula but if i had no like love for bioshock or anything i would not really worry about playing this it's not a game i'm going to be talking about in a positive capacity too much longer after this. yeah like i don't like hate the game but it's more baffling some of the design choices of like oh this could have been i really i would like to shoot more robots because they blow up real good uh <laughs> but it's if you like you're not making that fun you're making it you're almost punishing me for getting into fights because then you throw like a gazillion guys because i have to worry about an alarm system in this open world where you're like oh it'd be cool to go around and open a closet and murder all these guys and not have to worry about like oh did anyone see me um especially when the stealth isn't good it doesn't there's not enough if i could turn invisible or do some more stealth stuff then sure but i can't yeah see i've i feel like i'm ranting now but i think i haven't had a chance to talk mm -hmm. about this with anyone over the weekend because it was really bugging me it's pretty if it wasn't so pretty i probably would have been a lot less motivated but like it is a, a gorgeous game and like oh the score too like mick gordon's it's did you see him on see twitter him. talking about like um micro scales and stuff micro notes like uh -uh. so like the way music to, is set up there's like semitones so it's like 
you know, there's like half steps, right? It's like F, F sharp, G, G sharp, so on and so forth. He said like on, he, on Twitter, he's got a thread about like whatever's that next step uh, in, I think he called it microtone, something like that. Where like in between F and F sharp is another tone. And he's like using them together to make these like alien sound because our, our all of you know Western music is based on you know a scale from you know E through D sharp right or C to C right and like finding these little in betweens helps to make the music feel uh, otherworldly and uh, and there there are other other cultures that use tones from that but he's kind of taking his knowledge of that and applying it to a game that is ostensibly targeted towards a Western audience. Um, and it's cool. Very cool. It's a, it's a really, really good score. And it has moments that are very doom. Like one of the first big boss fights sounds exactly like a doom track. Like it rips, it's got breakdowns, like speed ups, all that stuff. But then you'll get to other parts where he's remixing like orchestral songs that you know of, like very classic I don't want to say Beethoven or anything because I don't know who did it, but like songs like that. And then it's like a Mick Gordon remix of it. And it's so, so sick. Like the uh, the score is easily the highlight of this game for me. Yeah, it feels like more and more I'm thinking about it. It's like dating, like it's like being in a unhealthy relationship, like dating a girl that like is very pretty. <laughs> but then the moment she opens her mouth, you're like, ooh, yeah, this is uh everything's going south here. Like, I do not like your personality. But then you, but yeah. then you you give in to your base instincts of like, but she's really pretty though. <laughs> got a great taste. Of Maybe music. I'll give you yeah, like, she does one redeeming thing. And then you're like, well, I'm going to call it off. And then you see her again and she's wearing a really nice dress. And you're like, okay, maybe I'll give it another day. This is kind of like <laughs> atomic art. <laughs> like, well, it still looks really nice though. And like it, it, maybe it gets better, but you know, deep down, like, I think I should just stop. I don't, I think there's, I yeah. have more problems than, there are more cons than pros. This is a toxic relationship. The, yeah. The, she actively dislikes you and calls you crispy critter she, she, all the time. She keeps saying crispy critters, and I don't <laughs> understand why. <laughs> We're watching a movie, and she keeps turning to me to say it. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. Awesome. Well, um, that's Atomic Heart. I feel like we're probably not going to talk about it much more on this show. Um, I'm I'm done with the game, I think. I've... I tried going back to it in the, because I saw some some boss fights on on clips online, and I was like, that looks really cool. That those animations, and then I just think about going and playing it again, and I, I just I think I might do Wo Long instead. Yeah, I mean, I have like I have long installed. And I I, I, I also <laughs> have like I have there are so many other games that have come out recently that I want to play. I want to play Sons of the Forest. I want to play Pizza Tower. Yeah, I've got like a dragon. I haven't started oh, yeah. that yet. I want to play that. It's yeah. There's only so much time in my day. Even even like working in games, there are there's only so many hours of the day you have to actually play games. And I'm not on any assignments related to Atomic Heart, so it's purely my free time that I'm spending on it. And I just feel like I want to spend that time doing things that uh bring me joy rather than whatever emotion yeah yeah like, it's just not yeah. worth it to me so i think i'm gonna yeah this done. isn't it's not a joyful game i feel like i'm like hate watching it a that's kind of and also the fact that it's been in development so long you're like i want to see what they made with all that time you mm -hmm. know it is that they said munfish the developer said it was like a 25 hour game and then oh my god <laughs> yeah how long to beat has it at 25 hours i think that's if you do everything because i i did a little bit of open world stuff and then did what marcus is planning to do which is just beeline it um for the at least the back two thirds and i i feel like i've beat in 10 to 11 hours um so if like you really are interested and you do want to like push through it it's not a 25 hour game like you might be yeah, i've already stopped reading all the audio stuff because they throw too much of that at you and a lot of it is just kind of like nothing can i ask you a very specific and random question about atomic heart how many different ways are there to open doors in this game Honestly, that's probably one of my favorite parts of the game. Yeah. Like, I think the I think the lock puzzles are I was genuinely sitting there fun. thinking about a feature on that. I, I counted six there's or seven. Six, six. Yeah, I, I think there's I, six. I was yeah. wondering there's if they the, kept adding more. There's the um the one where you gotta time the clicks, like the snapping. I like that which, one a lot. That's how I that's how I open my doors is I like snap at them in time. <laughs> um then there's a really annoying one where you have to like mix and match colors to hit at the exact same time. 
Um, oh, I, I like, that, like one. that one. The one where you kind of have to move the nodes around. Yeah, oh. they get some of them in oh, the end are, are like I gotta add to my tough. List. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's the one where you gotta you just have to go find a note that shows a diagram, and then you highlight these. You can just open a door sometimes. That's really nice. Just R1 <laughs> opens right up. Yeah, there's the pick locking, which is used like five times. I still haven't um, figured out how that works. Like, I it's think it's like, oh, it's like well Skyrim or like it's clearly going for like every lock opening thing ever. But yeah, like something about the way it's it, not intuitive. It's not. You just move. You just guess. Like, yeah, pretty and you, much. And it's not like a it's, it's not a two stick thing like in Skyrim and stuff. It's just one. And you just go left and right and see what works. Um, and then there's the the last door that I've encountered was you just put a little disc into the door. You have to go find the keys. I like the, the candles so as well. Candle doors with the orbs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's seven. Yeah, no, there's, there's more. Yeah. I have a whole running list because I was thinking one. about doing a video on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you, should, you should do that. that would be, it's, it's, that's so maybe I will call. keep playing the game. <laughs> it's like the yeah. first game I can remember, like the not great sort of like lock picking thing aside, but the other door puzzles are like, I don't know if I've ever been more excited to open a door in any other game because you see the puzzle like, oh, I bet this is going to be pretty cool. And yeah, it's probably the... Oh, the thing that gives me the purest joy <laughs> in atomic art outside of just looking at everything. You're like, Oh, I like this. Little Opening mini doors. <laughs> yeah. Is that an indictment of atomic art or is that? I mean, I think that'd be an indictment if I'm having more fun opening <laughs> doors than shooting robots. <laughs> Maybe I'll make that one. I had it. I had it on my notes. I have like a couple paragraphs talking about doors and atomic art. And I was like, is this worth doing? I have a bunch of saves. I might be able to hop in and go find some doors. Top 10 doors. That'd be really funny. Yeah. That's awesome. In Atomic Heart specifically. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, cool. Uh, I think we can start wrapping up the show. I do want to talk about... I've been watching the Double Fine Psych Odyssey. I don't know if it's Psych Odyssey or Psycho Odyssey. Psych- I thought it was Psycho. Psycho- it has the... I thought Psycho it was going for Odyssey. Like a, I, I thought it was like... The Double O. Yeah, like a style thing, but it was because, you know, Psycho not Psycho Odyssey. That's what I thought they were going for. But I guess, yeah. yeah. But then Min Max said Psych Odyssey, I thought. And okay. Well, Min Max is usually right. So, yeah, I, I trust I trust Ben with my life. I think I think Psycho Odyssey or Psycho Odyssey. Okay, psycho that's Odyssey. probably wrong. I like Psycho Odyssey. Man. <laughs> psycho Odyssey. Yeah. I actively dislike that. <laughs> I think I'm on episode eight. And I almost cried this morning watching episode eight. Like, oh no, they do such a good job of, I mean, two player productions. I actually met one of the Pauls um, who is, you know, one of the lead dudes on two player productions productions. Um, I met him uh, last fall and uh, super humble dude. And then I watched this and he kind of teased to me that this was coming. I wasn't sure when, but he's like, yeah, we've got like 30 some episodes of this documentary. I was like, what? Um, and in meeting him, he's like this quiet, humble dude. And then watching this documentary season, I'm like, dude, you, you should be the biggest asshole on earth because your work is just uh, incredible. And um, I'll probably never do anything as cool as him in the video space, but no, I'm, I'm very that. much enjoying uh, double finds psych odyssey. <laughs> pregnant pause there (laughs) (laughs) and i think everybody should watch it it's a fascinating look at at game development from ideation all the way to publishing and i'm only i think there's 32 episodes 34 episodes something like that i'm on episode eight it's so good it spans seven years they documented the development uh and concept conceptualization of uh psychonauts um two. and the rhombus of ruin right oh that one too uh, psychonauts 2 this is all happening as well as like alongside like there's references to like headlander and stuff like that that are happening uh it's it's the full picture and it's this look at a studio and its operations and its culture and the people in it and um you know you get attached to certain people and you, you like them and then this is over the course of seven years. So like they might depart the studio. I've heard that there are like some pretty heated. There's some firings that, on video. Like there's some, it's like they have firings on. Is that even? Legal? <laughs> I, yeah. I think they all like signed waivers to be documented, to be fired on camera. <laughs> how, how long is each episode? Uh, some of, like some of them are only 19 or... minutes. Some of them are 40. Okay. It's oh, kind of okay. just I thought whatever. they were all like an hour. No, no, no. Yeah. 
it's really kind of whatever the episode yeah i haven't seen it yet but i want to it's really good fun story and like there's a part of me that wants to watch it for a bit of a vanity reason because i it occurred to me recently that when i was an intern at gi so i interned at gi in the fall of 2015 and one probably my first like big big assignment was that they asked me to interview Tim Schaefer and Double Fine to break the news that Psychonauts 2 was happening. And I think GI might have gotten the exclusive on that. So we were going to be like the ones that I, I don't remember if it was just us or other outlets, but I it might have been just us. And this was the first interview I'd ever done ever of any kind. And they were like, <laughs> Ben Reeves, who was one of the people in charge of the internship program at the time, was like, hey, like very casually, like, hey, you know, you like Double Fine, right? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you like Psychonauts? I'm like, oh, I love Psychonauts. And he's like, so they're going to announce Psychonauts too. And, you know, you want to interview Tim about it? And I was like, you know, like just mixed, like what? Like, you know, <laughs> as a fan, it's like, oh my God, it's happening. I've been wanting it for years. And then also the holy crap, I like just me, you want me to do this? <laughs> That's like, so funny. No one else on staff awesome. is free. That seems like a big thing to throw on an intern that's never interviewed anyone ever. <laughs> but I didn't say this. I just said, yes. <laughs> That's and i had to sit in the um the old gi conference room and get on a zoom call with with tim and uh a couple of other people and just do this long interview where they also revealed the rhombus of ruin which had not, also not been known and i didn't they, i wasn't told that that would be part of it they just yeah. dropped like yeah because it was two VR. days after it was game awards and then psx yeah I know that because I've gotten to that part of the documentary. <laughs> so, yeah, they were like, yeah, we're doing this VR thing. And I was like, oh, my God. And then, you know, they talked about the fake campaign and all this stuff. So <laughs> looking at this, I was like, is there a chance that I'm in this somehow? <laughs> like, did they film them talking to me on Zoom? Because, like, if we were the only ones that got that scoop, that could be a possibility. So there was a part of like, am I in this? <laughs> That'd be so awesome. Somewhere or even referenced. <laughs> <laughs> but I assume not. Because like that, I be... haven't seen you, but I've also been kind of like watch listening. Yeah. Um. Like sometimes I'll step away. I've been moving, so I've been kind of watching it in the background. Um. And then like when key parts happen, I'll kind of stop what I'm doing and watch. Um, yeah. Like, is there a scene where like, yeah, we got to go talk to Game Informer to break the the break the news, and then you? Just uh, see... They mention outlets and embargoed information, and how they're hoping that the reveal doesn't get spoiled for the world. Right. Just one. I was. It just occurred to me because I was like. Wait a but second. apparently later I... <laughs> in the series, the Game Informer show is featured. Okay. Well, yeah. nice. That's so cool. well, and, uh, it's funny. I'm guessing I... for our I'm guessing for our cover story on Psychonauts 2. That would make sense. That was like two yeah. well, maybe that wasn't recent. It was recent. Like uh, we times. were here for that. Like yeah. we worked on that cover. I think that was uh that's when uh Blake did his big double fine uh like history piece that was part of that cover story. Uh, I forgot who actually wrote the cover story, but ben, that was definitely right? during our time. Like we were here for that. Yeah. It's Ben Reeves, I thought. Yeah, that sounds. And right. then Alex Stanek was on video, so okay. I have to see if any of them are in in uh, in the documentary. Yeah, is this documentary um, like? Do you get the sense that it's going to age well? Uh, I watched the Last of Us one recently and the God of War one after playing Ragnarok, and some of the stuff they say in the documentaries is like pretty wild like did you mean like the raising kratos Man documentary yeah like managers especially the last of us one and that's old. oh yeah like there are there like are several managers people. being like they're we crunch so hard like we're all about crunch here like <laughs> you know if, if we're not all crunching together then we're not going to get this game there's out. a disclaimer like, at the start of every episode that like we are growing as people and things <laughs> the <laughs> things that are you know said in this documentary could come across as insensitive now is it like the disney plus disclaimer when you watch one of the really old <laughs> <laughs> yeah. animations yeah, like dumbo is yeah they're like racist depictions of characters hey, well, yeah they, so they don't hold anything back from what i hear like I, I was talking to blake about it he was saying yeah they paint like certain people as like villains uh in this documentary like they're everyone when they get hired like i assume signs a waiver that's saying like you're allowed to be documented and uh, two player productions just puts the story together as they see fit. It's kind of wild. That is fascinating. And yeah. Blake even told me like there are certain people in it that like certain leaders at Double Fine, Tim Schaefer included, that like there are certain moments when like those people come across as not great, you know? Is it just like high? Does it seem like it's higher ups? Like the 
a standard you know programmer there is not really featured it's just kind of like managers and stuff or you you see a lot of people um there are three different three to four two or three different games they're working on uh during you definitely see a lot of leads but you also do see like you know the occasional programmer will talk about like i'm a systems programmer and i'm helping to make the vr game work uh and they'll, they'll interview pretty much everybody uh, at the studio that uh if they're working on something that is relevant and they'll That's sit awesome. in and all yeah, the meetings check it out. They, they'll go to people's desks when one person relocates the art director relocates and uh they like go out of state with him and like go on a road trip to see his new place uh, and it, it's it's extensive it is it's really a feat of of number one production but two just like documentaries within video games it, it is probably like the most in-depth look you'll ever see at game development publicly. did you watch the uh, sounds... double fine documentary the or like double fine adventure for broken age yeah not not all of it but a lot of it i did yeah i i bought it on blu-ray i was gonna ask like did you know do you think it's as good or i don't know what you're oh i think it's better than that i think better? it's better i i mean i think double fine adventure is really good but i think this is just like better in almost every way even from like a production standpoint like uh the qualities you know they got better cameras and uh it's just like really really well done it is very much in that style though if you like double fine adventure it's more of that i wonder i was wondering how if it would change at all like especially post microsoft acquisition to be to like hey you know we have this incredibly transparent (laughs) project and you know technically now you're a microsoft studio that's being you know shown all this stuff are you like I, I want to know what that convert if maybe they show it about talking to Phil Spencer. Like, hey, is it cool that we keep doing this? Because I can't confirm or deny any of that, but like my impression based on some conversations with people is that like maybe they tried to keep it as low profile as possible until it was released. Like just the, its existence. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's also funny going back to my my. I, that's for- that's consider that speculation, right? I. I mean, even it's like release has been kind of low key. I mean, it's like they, that, they just dropped it all pretty at once. big in our industry. But yeah, it's not like it didn't get us a lot of fans. Well, didn't they hadn't they been releasing some of it to like backers beforehand? I don't know. I don't know. I thought I heard that that some of these episodes had been going out for a while to Kickstarter or fig backers. And now that it this is they're just putting it out for everybody else. I don't know if that's true. I thought I heard something like that. I'm not sure. But um. It's funny, it's like going back to my interview with them when the game was announced when I was an intern, uh, one of the things I asked them was if they would film this the way that they did do double, like, you know, would you guys basically ever do that again? <laughs> and he, they would have had to have already been doing it at that point. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what was their answer? I'm like looking it up because it's on the site. Like my piece is still on the site. I pulled it up not that long ago, but I think they basically said like, yeah, we we'd like to do that. And their reasoning was like, well, since this is a crowdfunded thing, it, you know, we want to be as transparent as possible, you know, because this is, you know, again, this is before the fake campaign launched. Uh, so, but they didn't straight up say like, yeah, we're, you're, you're on camera right now, believe it or not, or anything like yeah, that. Oh, they had like you six know. episodes before they talked to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My, I get a whole episode of myself and you see awkward 2015 intern Marcus. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it would, like, again, looking back, be- now that this is out, I was just looking back in an interview, like, I know I straight up asked them if they would be doing this, and I think they sort of were like, probably, I don't know, maybe, but, like, the cameras would be rolling, <laughs> <at this point. laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, that's really funny. That's awesome. Well, yeah, everybody go check out Double Fine's Psych Odyssey. It's on YouTube, on the Double Fine YouTube channel, all, every episode. Uh, it's awesome. It is so good. I want to give it like a game of the year award or something. <laughs> I, I wish we could. Best um, documentary. We'll, we'll add that for our game of the year conversation, like a category best documentary. Yeah. We can't add our own, right? Do we have one? Oh, I, I guess. I mean, it's our award, Alex. We can technically do whatever we want. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. Well, let's get into housekeeping real quick before we end the show. Um, we always start po- housekeeping off with a new podcast review. This week, we've got a one star review, um, and normally I don't I don't highlight these, but this wasn't. This is the first one. This wasn't vile. Yeah. 
um, like some of them are. So I figured I'd read it. If if you're gonna like go and try to leave a bunch of one star reviews thinking I'm gonna read them, I'm not. Um, but this one star review comes by Games for Ga- Gamers, who says, "Focus on the games. Love the show with Andy and Ben, but the show has taken a pretty far left turn away from games. There is a clear agenda with some of the latest guests, and it has nothing to do with video games." Not unsubscribed yet, but getting close. And I just want to like kind of refute that. I went back and looked at all of our guests. We've had three guests since like October. Jesse Vitelli, who's like special, a returning guest, a friend of the show, friend of the show, Khalif Adams, who's been on the show many times, and Ben Reeves, who was one of the hosts that you said you liked listening to. So I don't know where that line came from. We've had three guests in like five months. So I don't know what agenda we're pushing. I feel like we only talk about video games. I try my best to to get us into the conversation. Today I think I think we spent two minutes before the show started and we were talking about video games. I I don't know where this is coming from. I think maybe take an inward look and you know try to figure out where where this is coming from. One of our three guests clearly upset you, I guess. I don't know why. There there isn't an agenda here. Uh, these are our friends, our peers, and we're excited about what they're doing in, in the gaming industry. And we're going to highlight them and, and share what they're doing. Uh, and if you don't like it, you can always skip the episode or, or find a different podcast. I, I'm not too worried. But yeah, I just, I, I just wanted to kind of refute that because I've seen that sentiment a couple times. And uh, I can tell you as the person who puts the show together every week, it's literally me opening a Google Doc, looking in at the reviews and the news that hit the website this week, and deciding which games we're going to talk about. And that is literally the only pre-production I do on this show. Uh, besides like, oh, this would be a cool person to talk about this game because they're excited about it. That's it. Uh, it's as simple as that. So I, yeah. Thanks for the review, I guess. Appreciate you th- sharing your thoughts, but I just, I disagree. And I hope that you can kind of look at the show with a different lens after, I guess, hearing me talk about it. I don't know. But um, yeah, let's move on. If you want to if you want to leave a, a podcast review, you can do so on Apple Podcasts um, or you can leave us a rating on Spotify. We really appreciate it. We typically prefer them to be positive, but, you know, uh, there's nothing stopping you from leaving a, a bad review, too, I guess. Weekly streams this week. We've got Super Replay happening. Dino Crisis continues, I believe. Twitch.tv slash Game Informer on Friday. Is that happening this week, Marcus? Yes. Uh, cool. We should be, yeah, we'll be part five? Part five, yes. Part five. Uh, Friday, Twitch, 2 p.m. Central. My hours. guess is there's going to be some dinosaurs. There will almost certainly be, though. If you watched last week's episode, we had a choice to make, and Kyle decided to go to nonviolent route that will probably have a ton of puzzles that i will <laughs> go on record of saying that i voted for the combat heavy shoot him in the face route <laughs> and i That's think even awesome. he was like i think i'm gonna hate this decision next week because <laughs> there were a lot of puzzles in last week's episode and they are not easy <laughs> let's say that's hilarious i was watching some of the puzzles and i was like this is complicated yeah so tune in to professor layton presents dino crisis this friday <laughs> And uh, while you're there, if you subscribe to us on Twitch, you get access to the official Game Informer community Discord, where you can submit listener questions. You can talk to the community, uh, including us and a bunch of other stuff. So all of that, twitch.tv slash Game Informer. Next week is going to be a big week on the YouTube channel, so I want to highlight that. Uh, YouTube.com slash Game Informer. I'm going to be publishing a maybe the best thing I've made for Game Informer, just putting it bluntly. The thing I'm at least most excited about since I, at my time at Game Informer, this thing, this special project is the thing that I, I've been working on it for a year on and off for a year. It was first started last April and it's finally coming out. Um, so it's going to be a big week over at the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Game Informer. Make sure you're subscribed. I think uh, you will really like it. Uh, or at least I hope so. Um, and then uh, also, we might have a new magazine coming soon as well. Unrelated, but but also very exciting. 
Um, so yeah, head over to GameInformer.com. Check in there daily for news, reviews, features, and previews, and podcasts. Um, go listen to All Things Nintendo, our, our Nintendo podcast, which releases every Friday. It's hosted by our online content director, Brian Shea, and you get a, a, a sneak into the world, a sneak peek into the world of Nintendo every week. Uh, lastly, follow the crew here on social media. You can follow Marcus at Marcus Stewart 7 You can follow Kyle, who left earlier, at Kyle M. Hilliard. You can follow Wes at uh, LeBlanc Wes. And you can follow me at It's Van Aiken. And uh, yeah, I think that's going to be the show for this week, guys. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for letting thank us. Thank you for. Yeah. Oh. Thank you for letting us thank each other. <laughs> what happened we there? <laughs> we'll talk over. We're, we both we like... just can't wait to thank you, Alex. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just really tripping over yeah. ourselves to do it. Thank you for letting me come push my agenda on this week. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's nice to do that. Yeah, no worries. Um, yeah, thank you for letting me rant about uh, doors and, and documentaries and whatever else we talked about this week. That was so, a fun agenda, let me tell you. I I used to have mm-hmm. an agenda in um in middle school we they required us to carry these notebooks around that were called yeah. agendas. Yeah. And they were like you have to have this or you're going to be in trouble cuz that's how you keep all your assignments. I don't know mm-hmm. that's barely relevant to the conversation but it just Poignant. popped in my head. <laughs> Poignant. Six, I was like, "Oh yeah, 6th grade, I remember agendas." I stopped carrying things like that uh, in sixth grade. I, I used to have a uh, Weight Watchers <laughs> what? calendar as a kid. What? Really healthy childhood stuff coming up right now um, where like my, my family was doing Weight Watchers. And I was like, I'll do it as a kid, whatever. I did not need to be doing it. But I was like, as a child, they're like, yeah. Yeah, I did not need to be doing it. <laughs> do this with us. But I had it and I was keeping track of my stuff. And uh, a high school bully in Spanish class went into my backpack when I went to the bathroom. I came back and he was waving around my Weight Watchers. And I was like a little overweight as a kid. I was like very active though and played a lot of sports. I was like slightly overweight, but just enough to where he's like, Alex, son, Weight Watchers. And my high school crush was in that class. Oh no. I was mortified. Or not my high school, my middle school crush. I was mortified. And then I moved towns and changed schools. And uh, left that life behind me. I was going to say, like, there's one of two reactions. You either do that or you just, like, basically beat that kid up. <laughs> and, yeah, and, and accept, that accept whatever consequences come with it. <laughs> I hate agendas. I hate planners. I hate tracking things. This is this this show is ending on a very weird because note. of Spanish. The, class. The, we are no longer Bully. talking about video games. We got to stop this. All right, that's true. We got to talk about games for gamers. Well, you yeah. know what? That's you, the move. Al, if that person is listening, Mister Middle School Bully, Spanish class guy. I don't even know who it was. I just know it was a bully. I don't remember who it was. He probably doesn't even speak Spanish because <sighs> he failed the class because he was too busy uh, tormenting you. He didn't pay attention. Being a bully, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get out of here. Bye. Bye.